then look at what other people have to face. Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Boule. Hello and welcome to Life with me, Patty Boule. Now my guest today, oh my goodness, is the beautiful and wonderful Rula Lenska. And when I say wonderful, I mean wonderful. Okay, she's an actor and she's a countess. I'm so honored. <laughs> you don't have <laughs> to curtsy. Honestly, an ardent conserv conservationist, a mother, a grandmother, and a life adventurer. Now, you see, when you said a mother, a grandmother, my heart melted. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm such an African. And I love when women, no matter what titles you have, when a woman says to me, mother, grandmother, I think, Oh, I go a week in the day. <laughs> well, I do I think really of do. them both as achievements, you know. Absolutely. Probably the most important achievements in my life. And it, I still find it hard to believe that one has actually produced another human being. Tell me about it. And that human being has produced another, another human, human being, being who is the love of my life. I mean, I'm reliving my daughter's childhood through him now. Oh. And he is, he just makes my soul sing. How old he is really he? Does. He's six. We have a five-year-old grandson, and he really is, oh. You know, you think you love your children until you have grandchildren. Yeah. It's a different sort of love. It's a different sort of love. And you're it's allowed amazing. to spoil them a bit, <laughs> which is nice. It is. It is really wonderful. Now, Rula, show business, okay? Things have changed. We, I think what I admire about you is that you grew up in a, a tradition of respect, especially respect for the elders. What is lacking now is, okay, let me put it this way. A few, 20 years ago, about 25 years ago, we started this empowerment thing. But out of the empowerment thing came selfishness. And out of the selfishness came total lack of respect for self and for others, especially the elders. I, completely, I was brought up in a very traditional, rather old-fashioned way, where the elders, uh, I was lucky enough to have two grandmothers for a short amount of time were an incredibly important part of my life. I used to have to curtsy and kiss their hands. I mean, that was outside respect. Mm -hmm. But in my soul, I knew how much they could teach me about life in the same way as my parents. And now I'm very keen on installing that respect in my grandson. OK, we have fantastic fun and we have, I learn from him and he learns from me. But there is a place for us older people. And of course, now we don't age in the same way that our parents and our grandparents did. That's right. Nobody believes that we're more or less of an age. Nobody believes, and I least of all believe that I've got to where I am and I'm still <laughs> alive, <laughs> having pushed the boundaries all my life. But no, I think as in Eastern European countries, as in African countries, as in third world countries generally, the older people are respected totally. and loved and they have a really important part in the community. Here, people seem to want to get rid of them as quickly as possible. And quite often when I'm not working, I get this feeling of being useless. I know, that is, you know. And that this, hurts. It, it, it does hurt. And this is the, the beauty of, you know, disruptive TV doing this show. Because we need the young people to really know that what goes around comes around, okay? What, you look at an older person, that's what you're going to be if you're lucky. And if you don't prepare yourself, uh, what I mean is in Africa, the elderly people deserve the respect because they court that respect. Like you said, your grandmother, both your grandmothers, you curtsy and kiss their hands. In Nigeria, in some customs, we actually, when you see someone, you lie on the floor to greet, greet them. Okay? But I also, you, you know, know, the stories that they tell, the experiences oh, yes. that they've had. Yes. I remember sitting at my grandmother's knee and just drinking in <laughs> every single word. I mean, she had an amazing life, you know, born into the highest of high aristocracy, losing everything during the war, barely surviving concentration camp, 
Um, my mother rescued her from the gas ovens oh, gosh. more than once. I mean, a horrendous life, falling down from the top to, to the very bottom and then having to restart again. And I remember my mother once saying, when in an interview she was asked, how come your life isn't ruled by bitterness and hatred <laughs> and anger? And she said to me something which I will never forget. It is your enemy's duty to destroy you. It is your duty to survive. And that enemy is not just enemy in the, in the war sense. No. But illness, bereavement, sadness, all the pitfalls that are in life. It is their duty to try and bring you down, and it is it's your, your duty, duty to survive. survive. I often say to people, the life has got us by the throat. Why grab each other by the That's throat? Quite right. We, it's true, you know, and I love that saying. Is this in your book? It is. It, it is. is. Yeah. Oh, this is Ruler's book, okay? So look this up on the internet. It's still available on Amazon, and yeah. it's just a ramble through my life with uh, several things, I think, which will... Um, surprise people. My colourful life. I love that. Very colourful. <laughs> Lots of adventures. <laughs> what would be the main thing or the couple of main things that you would say to your children that you have learnt in life? Short little sayings or something like that. I've, had, I've got loads of those, okay? But one of them is to say to them, you're very special. God made you extremely special. The minute you took a breath, you took the breath of God. That means no one is more special than you Unique. and no one is less special than you. Mm -hmm. And on this earth, you've got a place, okay? We're like jigsaw puzzles. Mm -hmm. You have a place. Don't try and fit into somebody else's place. When I speak at the university, I say to them, you see the skin? This is my skin. It fits me perfectly. I don't want to go into yours. It might be too tight. It might be too loose. This is mine, and I love it because it was designed specially for me. And did you always look after it, or did you have moments of craziness in your no, life? No, always. Um, I've been very lucky that way. Funny enough, you should ask that. Somebody said that on Facebook. It's funny. The first show I did was hair. Never tried alcohol. I think I had my first alcohol when I was 35. Never, ever smoked. Was never a party animal. I was in a convent going to be a nun before I was sent here. You, too. <laughs> you see, all the best people, but a, a lot of people kind of just live the life. But I've always had this, especially I survived a genocide. Mm. Okay, so I always had this feeling that there's a purpose for me. Because, you know, one of the worst things I saw was a body just running without head. The shrapnel had just removed it and it ran until it tripped. So I realized that this life is, is treasured and it could be taken from you any time. But I also believe that the, this is not it. Well, uh, one, one of the most important things I think as a lesson to anybody of any age is don't expect and you won't be disappointed. <laughs> I like that. It's not religious, but it's a wonderful oh, yeah. pointer in life. Oh, the yeah. more you expect and the more those things don't happen, the sadder and the more difficult you get. It's the same about attachment, you know, yes. which is a Buddhist philosophy. Mm. Attachment makes you suffer because when you lose something that you're attached to, then you are bereft. I like that because I never, I'm never attached to anything. I'm attached to people. Well, even that. Never anything. I mean, no, I'm, I'm yeah. not talking about uh, finances, but I mean, even if you're attached, if you love somebody like that. Oh, I, I see. I love you, you're mine. Okay, no. The trick is to love, I love you. That's Do right. what you want. Precisely. That Precisely. won't change my feelings. I like that. That's really... I love the wise sayings that my guests have come out with. I have so many that my mother had taught me. And, oh gosh, there's so many. Mommy, everything has its, its place. For example, she'd say, see God in everyone because God is in everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there's another one I say to people, if you upset me today, tomorrow I see you'll be friends, but if you do it again, I'll avoid you. <laughs> but I'm not going to put your lines on my face because I'll have mine eventually. I am not going to have sleepless nights over you. Never go to bed on an angry word. That's another that's one another my mother one. used to say. Never go to bed on, on an angry that's, word. That's very that important. True. And do as you would be done by. Do exactly. to other people as you want people to you see, do what, to you. What, what, the, the, it's, Wonderful you said that because young people now, I want to say to them, because they, they kind of 
addicted to dopamine. You know, that's what they get whenever somebody likes them on Facebook or that nonsense, which I, again, I'll never get addicted to because I'm not the kind of person who gets addicted to anything. It's that go and do something for someone else. There is nothing better than seeing that you've made someone happy. It, that's the greatest there, pleasure in life, is giving. better than seeing. It really is. It, I think, to me, it, you're so right. That is, the, that is the best fix in the world. Yes. To me, that's the best drug in the world. It keeps you sane, it keeps you happy, it keeps you healthy. Because I'm a Catholic Buddhist. Everybody always laughs when I I'm say Catholic. that. I was brought up Catholic, <laughs> yes. but I've now Catholic sort of Buddhist. slid more into the Buddhist arena. And uh, I live with the... Um, with the idea of doing something to make somebody smile or happy yes. or laugh to at least three people every day, whether it's bus conductors, whether it's shopkeepers, whether it's coffee uh, waitresses, whether it's just somebody begging on the street, just three little things really? to brighten somebody's day I in kind some of way. try and do it permanently. I've been training myself to do it permanently because, you know, it's like my mother said, there's God in everyone. Yeah. There's God in everyone. And even I remember my daughter coming back. She had this new person who just joined work. And she said, oh, it makes my skin crawl. I said, no, God has never made anyone who'd make your skin crawl. So I said, find the good in them. You, Which because can be it's very always hard. There. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard because some people have, you know, uh, I say God because it, that's me. You know, my book is called The Faith of a Child because that's what has kept me alive, okay? And I think some people have him as the pilot of their life, flying the, the, the plane. Some people have him passenger at the back. But he never leaves, is what I believe. He's a co-pilot, because you have some sort of say about where your own life is going. Oh, I know. It's but I, but I like him to be there. pilot. I like him to be pilot. I'll be co-pilot. <laughs> no, I like him because I've learned in life that, you know, my mother always says, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's yeah. lovely. You know, so I always say to him, okay, here is my plan. You take and do with it what you like. So I keep him as pilot. Let me tell you a lovely story. My kid brother, I was babysitting him years ago when he was very little, about five, and he'd been a very naughty boy. And he was kneeling by his bed saying his prayers, and I was standing outside the door, and he said, please, God, I'm sorry for being naughty to mummy and daddy, and, and I, I'm sorry I was a naughty boy again. Please, please, God, make me a good boy. No. And then there was a long pause. And then he said, and this is your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You see, the faith of a child is wonderful. Absolutely, unquestioned. I used to make my, my children laugh. Because when we first started saying prayers as a family, and I said, okay, Lord, they said, this came from the sound of music. When you close the door somewhere, you open a window. I said, please make mine a French window, much bigger than the door you close. <laughs> it's very cheeky, you know, <laughs> or something like, you know, um, I tell you what, how about you answer this prayer in my own lifetime because you didn't build me to last forever. So <laughs> don't postpone it until after I've gone. I would really love to have it now. But, you know, we're cheeky with prayers, but that's what prayer is for. Yeah. You know, prayer is about talking. OK, so we say God, but it's like talking to the universe. And communicating with each other. It, this uh, is one thing where... I have a great difficulty with social media nowadays, yes. is that the children are forgetting how to have conversations. That's true. You go out on the street and you see people on the tube, on the buses, walking on the streets. Everybody's glued to a piece of machinery. They don't look around them. They don't make eye contact anymore. No, they don't make eye contact. And they and were never good at making eye contact anyway. So this is even you know, worse. The thing is that yeah. typing text messages and even sending emails it's not the same as having a conversation. That's history. I mean, I remember those wonderful days when one used to get handwritten letters. I know. I still and try and do that. That would arrive, arrive on the doorstep and at treasured writing, whoever it was, you know, a member of the family or a lover or a husband or a child or whatever. And now those are like gold dust. Oh, I know. I mean, I've always instilled in my children that thank you letters and, you know, for presents or for going to stay for a weekend or whatever should always be handwritten. And all of that wonderful old-fashioned chivalry is going out of the way. It's, you see, because people, that's the, the word everyone uses, it's old-fashioned. But I say to them, there's nothing old-fashioned when it comes to human communication. No. It was ever thus. 
and it will stay the same. You will lose your way, but you'll find your way back, you know, right back to that. I think it's very important, uh, and, you know, I see with my grandson, because computers are how they're taught at school now. Mm. So this is now m much more than watching television, as can I play on my Game Boy or can I uh, play on the computer? Yes. And that that time is limited. Yes. Because although, obviously, it has its place, but it is killing the art of communication. It, it, it has killed the art of... Because, you know, I mean, the, the ones I like is them sitting on the train. You see six girls sitting. They're texting each other. Yes, I know. I, I mean, know. that... They, they're texting and each other. Photographing. Oh, yes. Oh, that's the one. Selfie. Yeah. In fact, today, traveling on the tube up here, I was on a fairly full carriage on the district line, and I had this idea. There was one person in the whole carriage who wasn't on either an iPad or a phone, and I felt like going up to him and saying, congratulations, <laughs> you, <laughs> you are the only, the only person. in this place. <laughs> I love it because I, I keep saying to people, we haven't learned how to walk as human beings, and I don't know how we're going to do it now with technology that we have. And the idea of this program is kind of, help young people decipher. I think it's a sense of, <sighs> yes, just being able to decipher the good, the bad, the ugly, to be able to tell the difference and know what's good for you and what's not. Uh, years ago, a young man would, would have to go into a shop and actually be shy before he goes and gets a dirty magazine. Do you know what I mean? And, and he would think again. And sometimes they just think, oh, it's not worth it. Because society brought you up, and you think the shopkeeper is going to say to the mother or the aunt, did you know your boy was in buying one of these? Now, oh, they're on open display everywhere. It's unbelievable. And, not, and even more dangerously, I mean, you make a wrong click, and it's happened to me it's, hundreds oh, of times, and suddenly you're being faced with these ghastly Horrible, images. Uh, honestly, know. but thank God I have something called some security thing it hasn't happened for years because it's just it's it's quite awful and the young people I know. who do can't pay for the security things it's it's just so hard now and Patty while we're on that subject hmm. I mean the children who are bullied online I mean to me that is such a sadness because there is so much pressure nowadays to be perfect you know whether it's pencil thin whether it's to have no freckles whether it's to have ombre hair whether it's to have fake nails whether it's to, whatever you have to but tell them it's not real it, it's not real and you it's have not perfect. snapchat where you know you have they have what they call influencers or something you In, know they improve these, their faces oh yeah, yeah. but this thing instantly makes the face so what about the person when you meet them for real they don't look like no. that. You see, that's another state of mental health problem. Yeah. I always say now when I have photographs taken, please don't airbrush. Don't airbrush. It's not fair. Yeah. You know, then people see you and they think, how on earth does she manage to be the age the she is without that's right. any lines exactly. away? Exactly. Any... We're aging in front of the public anyway. Yes. You know, it, there's nothing like it. We, we are getting older right in front of the public. But the young people, I think the, the, the thing is to... Just tell them how special they are. And you're not like anybody else. Don't try and step into anybody else's shoes. No, but it's when it's forced upon you by peers who say, you know, yeah. they send out messages saying, vote uh, out of 10 how ugly you think this person is. Oh, and then those whoa. poor kids are left with that legacy. They believe what their peers are telling them. And they commit suicide. They harm I know. themselves. I, they, know. I mean... I Did you know that, that they, they were telling terrifying. me that suicides average 15 a day? 15. 15. 15 a day. I mean, I heard this at the university, and it really knocked me sideways. I'm thinking, what are we doing? We, we really need to rein this back one way or the other. You know, so we're hoping that in some way this program will get young people, because of the, the streaming, will get young people to watch and maybe learn, get into the habit of saying, you know, did they talk about this? Did they talk about that? Or It would be nice if you got people uh, suggesting what they would like you to talk about. And yes, also, we, hopefully God willing will do that. It's terribly important that yes. young people should realize that there is help out there. there. Is help if out they're worried there. about going to their own siblings or to their own parents or whatever, there is always help. But you have to be brave enough to ask to for ask it. To ask for it. And there's hope. Yes, there oh, there's is always hope. Always hope. I mean, heaven knows the things we have been through and thought we couldn't survive. And then suddenly, 
the doors open. You know, I forgot to mention that you are going to be in Coronation Street. Yes, uh, yes. Claudia made her return last night. Fantastic. <laughs> You're returning to Coronation Street. Yes. I'm going to start watching Coronation Street again. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's a, it's a lovely, again, not too far away from what we've been talking about. The relationship is between two older women. Now, I'm sure that you found out the older you get, the more important girlfriends become. Yes. Because they're the ones that we really thrash things out That's with. That's true. So this is a delightful sort of love-hate relationship, battle of the hairdressers. <laughs> um, and, you know, sort of quirky and funny and slightly catchy, but inside there's warmth. And I think it's a... It's such a nice change from all the heavy lines that one gets nowadays yes, I know. in soaps, you know, whether it's murders or um, betrayals Everybody's or trying to shock more yeah. than the other. And this is just good, old-fashioned. Old-fashioned, there it is, that word again. And I there's love nothing old wrong fashioned. with old-fashioned. There's old fashioned. nothing I love. Or I have always loved old-fashioned. Someone said to me, don't you remember ever being 16? I said, no, I was always this age. <laughs> <laughs> What's and also, you know, everything goes round in circles. Exactly. So old-fashioned 10 years ago is now the height of fashion it's again. <laughs> so it does. Everything it does. goes round and round in circles. It does. Oh, Rula, thank you so much for coming on it's the show. Been. And for your words of wisdom, you A wonderful woman, you. Thank you, my thank darling. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if you ever need help out in Nigeria, I could always fit in your suitcase. Oh, bless you. <laughs> thank you. I would definitely really remember that. To really go and help that. people. I will remember okay. that. God bless Thank you. God bless you Thank too. You.